Welcome to the crab ride class. Um, so as you see, it's all about being a good crab. So you have to use your crab hands, and you have to ride the other crab. <laughs> so you have to encircle them, jump on their back, and ride them. <laughs> That's the whole idea of the class. Now, actually, um, we're talking about a specific way of placing our foot, which is called the crab ride or crab ride hook. So, real quick, as an introduction. The crab ride is a term that comes from wrestling, when he's like in a turtle type position. Right, when he's here, I would be here behind him, kind of like this, or even if he's on his butt, his butt here, like wrestling. This, this is kind of where the term crab ride comes from, right? And just for the purpose of this class, or how I use those terms, because people have different ideas, I call it the crab ride if we have both crab hooks inserted. And this is a crab hook if we just have one, if it's just one of these hooks, okay? And you see it's basically like a butterfly hook, but from behind, right? Butterfly hook would be from, like most of you know butterfly hooks, right? Yeah, from the inside, right? So I'm in front of him, and my foot is, same side foot is behind his um, hamstring. And if I'm behind him, or in this case, like sideways, but I'm behind him, I insert, kind of like similar to a butterfly hook, the same side leg, right? That's a, a crab hook, right? Or a crab hook. And the idea is to have pressure with my knee from the top, and my, or from the outside, let's say, and my foot from the inside, right? So I get this twisting sensation on his knee. You don't just want to place it like this because you can just wiggle around, right? You want to basically pin, uh, bring this knee, pinch it down to the ground, in this case, right? And the foot flares up. So I'm doing this one. I'm doing this internal hip rotation, right? Like this. And you can, in this part, it's a little bit outfitted scenario, but we just use this to, you know, everyone gets, um, gets comfortable with the position and the, the pressure. You want to keep this pressure, right? You can move him around here. It's not that easy for him to just kick out his leg, right? I actually have good decent pressure and I can pinch him down here, and we can actually use this in practical ways, from top to, um, we look at different scenarios later, but just so you get comfortable with this, okay? So just go, your partner is laying like Nicola does here, and you have a slight bend in your knee. It's really hard if they have a straight knee, to get a proper crab hook. You can do, you can get like a shallow crab hook, but you don't have the same bite, so you want a slight bend, right, like this. And this knee is really important, if this knee gets too shallow, it slips out, right? So everyone sees this, right? This knee is here, it slips out. I want this knee to be far over his. So you see there's a, there's a excess of knee basically. My knee's here, it slips out. Okay? So everyone just gets here with your partner. You have a slight bend in the knee. And you just you can pull them in with the hand too, but preferably you do it just with the leg and you bring this knee far forward. Okay? Your foot is slightly below the knee, not right into the knee, but you don't want to be so far on the knee so you know your knee doesn't have purchase on the thigh. You want to be close to the knee and your pinky side of the foot which is to the outside, your inside of the knee, which is to the side, right, to the outside, like this, right? You just have this grip. It's kind of like a grip, right? I can move in here and do all sorts of things. Of course, we're just here, you, you would be able to get it out, but it's still useful, and later we use it with different grips, right, so it doesn't come out right away, okay? So real quick, just like everyone, two minutes to get comfortable with this, and then we actually um, go into sequences and back legs and stuff, okay? All right, let's go, one, two. <laughs> Cool. Any questions so far? <coughs> Any questions? Everyone got it? Okay, nice. So, um, next thing we do is, so we're basically building, like most of my class, we're building from the end to the start, right? So we, we start with kind of like artificial entry, and then we work back towards like more of a practical entry. Okay. So the first one we start, he's like kind of in the third position, but with like knees open, so more like between four points and third, right? So I have plenty of space to get in here, right? So it's not like, don't fight to get in here, just step in here, with both feet basically on the inside, right? So you have your crap that position, right? And of course from here, we could spread him out and attack him here, but um, just for the purpose of the drill, he just chooses one side and flops there. And you make sure to have your hands around his uh, hips, and really put pressure down on his hip bones, right? So you don't want to be up here, this gives his uh, hips too much ability to move, right? You want to be on top of his hip bones and basically pushing them into your hooks, right? You want the pressure on your hooks so your hooks basically are reinforced, okay? And then he flops to one side and when he flops, I'm just flopping with him, okay? It's kind of a little bit of an artificial entry. It actually does happen sometimes, but also a little bit artificial, just so you get here. And you see the main thing is I want this knee here to be, you know, visible for you guys, right? You see that this knee right, is exceeding his thigh. It's not on the inside here, okay? If it, if it happens here, we have uh, we have more work to do to get it back or switch sides. There's stuff we can do, but for now, just to get the basic uh, back take from here, we want the knee basically visible here. Now keep the same pressure you just had with the you know, with the exercise we just did, 
where I'm basically pushing with the outside of my foot and the inside of my knee. So I have good pressure here, and of course we have the same here. Right? So I have both grab rights and grab hooks in. Mm -hmm. This is a full grab right. right? I have both grab. And the basic um, back take from here is just using this extension together with my hands on his hips to shove him um, in front of my hips or even below. So I don't want him up here. Right? From here I can't do a back take. If I try it, he will just roll over. Right? If I try to get him here, he will just roll and it's get scrambly and messy. Okay? So this is not what we want to happen. Instead, okay. here, right. so instead, what we want from here is to have his hip in front of our hip. So if he's too high, just use your hooks together with your hands. You see, I'm just shoving him down. If you can lock your hands, that's great. You can also do it with open hands. That's fine too. Right. This is what we want. And now I can use this extension, uh, like when I have him down, to uh, keep this extension, keep the pressure, and climb to his shoulder while you throw his hook in. And then I pull him with both hand and feet to the opposite side. Over. Right. But I have now one back hook in, inserted, and I have still the crab hook in. Right. So you can't just um, you know, mess around with this foot. I still have the crab hook. Right. But this gives me time to either get my leg across all the way, right into a body triangle, if you have a small partner. Right. If you have a bigger partner, you can't get this. Just bring the foot over, and then just go put the foot, right? or however you prefer to leg control. It's a good option. Or you can go to the triangle. Okay, so one more time. It's just start in this position, right? Both feet are in, knees are out, right? Don't bring the knees inside, knees are out. And you have control right over his hip. He falls to one side, just stay with him, make sure your knees are pointing forward. So you see how my knees is on the side of this thigh here, right? I keep this pressure. If he's, if he's already in front of my hip, that's perfect. If he's too high and I messed up, I can still shoot him down with both my feet and my hands, pull him down, right? Then you can either throw in the hook first, or preferably I get behind his shoulder here. I want the hand shoulder. Now his hand can't annoy me. The hand tries to push me away or something. I can't do it anymore. So I can throw on this hook, and then I'm just basically kind of like a forward trim, have kind of motion, bring him over here. And then still keeping this hook. If you have long legs or small partners, I won't bring in the, the body trying like this. You have a perfect back and forth. If you can't do it because he's too big or he's too small, just go here and he's there. Any questions or want to see it again from a different angle? What's one? Okay. Same angle? Oh. Yes, yes, yes. So one more. Go here. Right. And I'm making sure that my knees are here, right? They, they're not here, otherwise I lose his hip. I want to have the knees firmly on the outside. So when he drops, you see my knees right there. Then I'm shoving him down. Right. Look for <coughs> behind his shoulder. Like, you no, know, I'm coming from behind here. This also works, but this is a little bit more stable. But it's also fine, right? This like an underhook also works, but this is a little bit safer, okay? Throw this over, and now pull him with this hook. I'm going right with my Achilles to the inside of the thigh. Pull him over, and kick this one up. Right? So I still have front control here. You can throw over this one right away, or just bring this here. Okay. Everyone got it? So let's try it. One, two. Touch my... So the, the most common question was the hand placement, right? So the hand placement, let's say we're here. Position right here. Look, right. So when I'm here, and one of the big fights is like this hand. This hand is super annoying. Can push my head, can push my, my hands away, right? My knee. Like, this is super annoying, this hand. And when I get behind his, his uh, shoulder here, my elbow, kind of like in a collar tie, can keep his arm pretty, pretty far away. Right? So if he tries to push it into me, it's really hard, right? And I don't have to be here for long. Just need just a second or two. But you walk him down and then get your... Okay. Um, this, this grip is fine too, right? This is fine too. He just has more options to push you, right? If he's here, he's finally... Yeah, into my face. <laughs> <laughs> and he can also, just like... It's, it's hard to come with his hand, but his elbow... His elbow will slip in a lot for a car like this. Like this. this is super annoying. Right? And now he can basically, um, you know, push, push himself away, which is the opposite of what I want. I want his hips to go down, he wants to go up, right? So the more he can push him in this direction, the more I lose him, right? And then we have to do the other stuff. Um, and if I can um, avoid this, it's really hard for him to walk out, right? If I put pressure here with my legs, and um, he tries to get, get away, and I don't give him a proper grip, right? it's really hard for him to get out, right? And, here, and this, this um, forearm is also active, right? And don't think that because the hands in the air, this is not active. You can't crap in there, you know, it's like really weird, uh, like you crap hands in. Um, but with the forearm, you can have a lot of pressure on his thigh. So I'm pressing in here, and I'm also constantly putting pressure with the crab hooks, just like we did in the 
basically warm up the heart, right? Or we keep this pressure here. So his hip is under constant tension. If his hip is loose, he can just scramble it away, right? I'm here, I'm like, oh, so I scramble it away. But if I have proper tension with the grab hooks here, now it's very hard for him to move, right? It's very hard. And I also use this to pull him here, and then if I can get there, I climb up, right? And this is always a battle here. You fight with this one, try to get it away. If you can feed it over, this is also great. This is for Michael, he does this a lot. He loves this. If you can feed it over, that's like the best spot because now there's no objection or anything they could uh, stop you from the shoulder. You can put it down, come over here, and over. And then you already have now. It's also great. Okay? But there's many ways, but um, this one works really well for me. But if you get the underhook, it's also great. If he turns away and you lose him, you can get the underhook, pull him back in. There's, there's many ways. It's not like, just like do one thing and everything will always work. Okay? Um, but what this is a great grip. What do I do when? Keeps us uh, in the elbow connection. Yeah, so when he has the elbow connection, so first of all, you always want to uh, like extend him, right? So, what I mean by this is I'm constantly pulling him off from here, right? So, it's not that easy for him to go close because the knee elbow connection needs a knee too, right? So, his knee has to be here. It's really hard to find someone with such long arms that knee elbow connection when I push his knee away from right? It's not that easy, right? But that's one of the main things. From here, I'm stretching him out, right? So, he tries to have knee elbow connection, it's not that easy, right? And then I throw this in right away. So this is very similar. So most people know the curve, right? Exactly from this place where you have the back take, but you can't get in the second hook, right? And you don't even know that it's called the curve, right? But a lot of people know this move. You just go in here to open him up and then throw in the hook, right? It's a very old school move. Um, but that's basically, that's the curve, right? That's the exact same situation. You open him up here, right? And then you keep your knee tight and you just swing your foot. That's the same situation, okay? So it's actually, um, Hafa Mendes always called this the outside hook. Crab hook, and I think that's the reason because you have the regular hook, the inside hook from back control, and outside hook. Basically. Um, okay. Next thing we're gonna do is to start to get a little bit more like um, this could be a practice. So you land there sometimes, like uh, after reverse lahiba inversion or something. You could learn land in this exact position. But uh, for most people who are familiar with bowls, you, you start with like a lahiba hook. Right? A lot of entries you get from the lahiba hook could be he's standing. Or it could be he's on the ground like we do now in this double seated position. Okay. This builds a little bit, or like one little bit, on what we did last year. If you were here, that's helpful. If you have general <laughs> knowledge about this, it's also helpful about bolos. If not, I'll show you a quick alternative later how to get there. But ideally, you start here in uh, the lahiva, so your outside legs cut through, and you extend this knee to collapse this knee to the inside, right? And you really want to extend this, right? One mistake is to just pinch this knee to the inside, which looks the same, but it's super weak. But if I actually extend my leg, it's, it's super strong, right? And not just because my is smaller, it also works with big, right? You just, like, do this. You, you still pinch, but you also extend, right? And this is really important, right? And then your foot often lands from this side, slightly on the far side, okay? But either way, you want to have this knee to the inside, so there's open space where I can roll towards this hip, right? So I'm blocking this knee, either with my elbow, with my hand, right? Or do an alternative shortly, but I always want to block this knee so I can get around here. Right? In, the, in the perfect world, I can just here you know, roll through and get into my bowler. Right? And then from here, we could do stuff. We did last year, just basic bowler stuff, lift him all the good bowler stuff. But a lot of times, this is hard because, of course, he's fighting for his knee. And there's two specific scenarios where we don't go straight there, but we actually bring our knee behind here for um, what's often called a waiter bowler, where we basically have this knee right behind his knee, like over here. And this is super helpful if people are um, like trying to run away or they block your leg, right? It's much easier to get than the full bolo, okay? So when I'm here, Nikolai is really skittish and he's running away, right? He's like, trying to flee, 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 yeah. And to come in for the regular bolo, this happens, right? I just lose him right away. It's very hard to keep him in space. But if I use the, the knee here, behind his knee, I can force this bend and keep him with me. So he tries to still get away. When I come in here, I can keep, I can attach myself here, right? Even if he's really basically, um, yeah, like squidish and running away. I can still hold him here, right? And then I have time to go to different options. I could go back to the bolo, but it's just sometimes hard. If he's fighting hard and he's running away, it's still hard to get this hook in, right? And the easier option is to just pump this hook behind his knee. And we're straight basically to the crab hook, right? I'll show this in more detail shortly. We're basically to the crab hook. And you could even reinforce the crab hook with this, which is called the crab X or X crab. It's basically kind of like an X hook. Just, just makes it stronger, right? This is already fine. You can wiggle it a little bit. Now you can't wiggle. Makes it strong, okay? So that's basically um, the first thing you want to get to. And then from here, there's a lot of follow-ups, okay? One follow-up is very equivalent to what we did with the bolos. We lift him. If he's on his hands, like he's now, I can't push him down. I try to push into him, 
right? But he's too strong. He gave me resistance with his hands, which makes his left come, hip, hip come up. As soon as I push, his hands get heavy and his hips come light. And I can just pull him on top of me into the crab right? And then, okay. You get this especially in, in drilling. Because when you drill with people, that's what we did first, they always want to look and get it here, okay? Um, later, they will often fall down and defend, which is what, what you do after. But you still get this from beginners of when you're drilling, when people are on their hands, they just do this, right? And then it, the more you push into their hands, their hips get light, right? The hips get really light, you can just bump them over. It, it doesn't take much strength. So, again, we're here. We cut this inside knee right over his knee, right? So it can't come out, right? He wants to open it. We don't let him open it, right? We come in here and we keep this pressure. So pulling here, pushing here. Kind of like a deadlift, right? Like you're doing deadlift, you're pulling and pushing. Like this, right? And then from there, there's a few ways to, to get the uh, crab hook in. But the easiest one is just to push him up, replace your hand with your foot, hit the crab hook in, and get this extra. Right? Now I have a good tension here. If he tries to feel his back, it's not easy. Right? I have a lot of tension here. And I could go with my free hand now to his far foot or his far knee. Here, right? And again, I'm pushing into him, but he's not falling. He keeps his, his hand strong on the mat. Right? Like I said, that's one reaction you can get. The first one we look at. Right? So I push him, and you feel. Right? I'm just pushing gently into him, and I see his hip coming up. So try to keep your hip on the floor. Right? Try as, as much as you can. Right? Prove me wrong. Right? It's really hard to keep his hip on the floor. Right? It naturally comes up. And as soon as I feel his hip coming up, I'm just pulling him on top of me and bringing this knee on top of this. So I have one crab hook. I want two crab hooks. Right? So I'm pushing here. I'm just lifting him on to the second hook. Now I have two crab hooks, just like we want. And now I can <coughs> shove his hips down. Boom. Get my back and forth. Right? Just like we did earlier. One last time, a little bit more fluid. Okay. Start the ball off. Boom. Come in here. Step underneath. Go to the X grab. From here, push into him. Make him float. Come up. It's a lot of fun. Okay. <laughs> and um, if the beginning is too much for you, you could also try to get, go ahead right away. Um, where you basically just go on your back, lift your partner's foot like this, and just get the, the hook in, right? So if the entry, if you're not familiar with the, you know, how to get there, just, you know, he's just sitting like he does now. <coughs> so, and I just bring my foot up, and I have my crab hook. My near foot, basically, is my crab hook. My far one is supporting it in this extra position, right? And here it should be very hard just to kick his leg up, right? There's a lot of tension, right? And then from here, like I said, go to his far leg, push into him so his hip is floating, then just pull him on top of the second hook. And now just extend forward. Boom, and then you can see, here it's still relatively stable. It looks very, like it's super loose, but I'm keeping the crab hooks, right? My knees always pinch in, always pinch in, feet always out. So if he just tries to get out here, run away, it's not that easy, right? Now also I'm extending him. I'm not like this, this gives him a lot of leeway. Yeah, I'm extending him like this. So if he tries to get out, it's not easy, right? And then you have to get your hooks in. Yeah, want to stand the bottom one? Then yeah, start here. Make his knee, force his knee to the inside by extending our, our the heel hook, putting pressure on his knee, right? It's like rolling, inverting close to his hip, and using this knee right over his knee, right? I'm basically sandwiching his knee. He tries to open it, it's really hard. Sandwiching, sandwiching, rolling to like this, right? Come up, up, boom. Okay, everyone got it? Sweet, that's right. One, two. Yeah. One of the big problems that actually happened is like to, to your partner's um, responsibility. Your partner for this part was just supposed to be on the hands, right? A lot of you, when you enter, the partner let go, hold for him, right? Which is what we do now, right? There's, of course, there's an answer too, but um, you know, you want to have the proper response. So, for this part that we just did, it's important that the partner's here because when he pushed into me, now my hips become light, right? I can't do it with a lot, you know, but his hips become light because I'm pushing him onto his hands, right? If the hands are not there, which we look into now, but from here, I do the same transition, I'm here, and I'm pushing into him now, now his hips are coming up, right? So I'm stacking him, right? That's like a stack pad, right? You're stacking him, so his hips are coming off the floor, which is really great because it allows us to dig this knee underneath, right? So I'm pushing him here and dig this knee deep underneath, which is exactly what we want. Because now if I push him in front, he's right in front of my hip, and we can do 
a little bit earlier, coming here, coming here, that's a bit back. Okay, so you do the exact same thing. Do your entry here, right? Come in. Also, when you do the entry, this uh, grip, I forgot to talk about this grip. Your forearm is supposed to be on the hip bone here, really digging in. Right? So don't just, uh, if you try to go with the hand here, it's really weak and loose, right? So really try to use your forearm here. Right? You can grab the thigh, but depending on your dimensions, you might not even have your fingers connected. You might have, it doesn't matter too much for fingers. You really want to be digging into the thigh here, okay? And your feet are always, um, your hip is always a little bit extended, so don't go crazy, but also don't be like this so you have no space. You want to have a slight extension always, pointed towards them, because he might push into me here with, this, with the feet, and I want to be able to take this. If I'm pointing away from him and he's pushing into me, I'm coming at this. Right? So I want to point towards him. Now if he's pushing into me, I can easily take it, right? no problem. Okay? And then from here, we just push him up, transition here. There's other transitions, but that one is nice and easy. That's the trick. Okay? You do this one, now I'm in my strap again. Right? Again, now I'm pushing into him, similar to like we did before, but his hands are now off the floor. It could be that he's starting on the, on the hands and then falling. Put, you know, it could be a mixture, right? So he's starting here. You might want to push into him there, right? and then he starts falling. Right? It doesn't really matter, right? It doesn't really matter. Now, once he's down, it's hard for him to come up again, and we can push into him. And we can release the x grab, go on the floor, and just dig forward, forward, forward. So his hip is coming up, right? So we really use this foot, kind of like bridges, like you're bridging while you're kicking with this top leg, right? Doing little, little bridges, kicking, and your whole goal is to get underneath his hip. So his hips are coming up. And your knee is nice and deep. You see how deep my knee is? Since my knee is out here, it's not good. I'm shooting my knee in front of the hip. This is perfect. Now I can use my far hand and bring him on my second grab hook in here and do the same thing we did earlier here. Or sometimes you can even forego the second hook, just throw it in right away. Right? So if it's really tight, you would go for the hook. Right? If it's a little bit looser, you could just throw this in right away. And you help with this to pull it down into the far side. Okay? It's not that much different than what we did earlier. Just slight variation. Then you push over, you do this. Oops, come in there. Boom. Right. If you can, get this away. It's also great if you can do this without your hand. Right. If you get better with this, you can do this without the hand. <laughs> From the beginning, you want to, you know, hand makes it easier. Okay. But there's very, there's many variations to switch here. Okay. But this is just one of them. You come in here. Okay. And again, from here, I want to stack him. So I push into him. And sometimes you can get in deep right away. But usually you need the help of the second hand, uh, second leg, sorry. You keep digging into it like this. Right? And then from here, my second leg is coming uh, over or under his leg while I'm pulling his hips. This hand is pulling his hips right in front of me. Like so. I throw this in. And here's his hips. Uh, his shoulder. And then his back. Okay. One last time in fluid. Almost fluid. <laughs> fluid. Here. 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 Stepping, stepping, stepping. And when I feel him high enough. Come here, here, or if he's tight, he's super tight, like people ask for, there's good uh, knee elbow connection, I can't come in. You can dig in the crab hook, you know, stretch him out, and come in. Okay. Questions? Okay, got one, two. <laughs> Okay, so this one, I think for many it worked well. Um, if you have a problem, just focus on the knee here, right? So when you get into the position, right, we're here, we're here. So one thing is, that's like more fundamental, but every time you're in this Bambolo type position, don't try to look away or even to the ceiling, but always look towards your opponent, right? So here I can take the pressure, if you press into me, I can take it. If I'm here, now it's gonna be hard and he might push me away, right? You always wanna be here, it doesn't matter if you do this, or if you in the Bambolo, whatever you have, you want to um, be on your near side shoulder and hip, right? So this side is, in the see, I'm not flat here, right? I'm like this. And um, for this option, I want to get this knee deep underneath and his hip off the floor. And I get this by tripping in, tripping in, tripping in, like this, right? So his hip is coming off the floor, okay? And then from here, there's many ways to finish. We just bring it back to the, the, the basic finish because A, it's a good one, and B, we don't have super much time, right? But you could go here if you prefer to twist the hooks and other stuff too, right? Um, but this is a good, it's a good option. Um, the last one we do is when he resists this one. Right? So I try to push his knee down, but he resists it. Okay? Which is also very common, of course. And they could go either way. You could do this option and then the one we do now, or the other way around. 
Okay, they're just basically A, B options, push, pull, you know. Uh, doesn't matter which one you start with. So I'm here, okay, and I'm trying to push his knee down and elevate his hips, but he extends and I can't get his hip down, right? You see, it's very hard to get him down. So instead, I just invert in the other direction and come on top here, right? And now we're in a great topside position. It's called the top crab, or also, uh, I sometimes call it the crab drag, because it looks like a leg drag, but with the crab hook, okay? It's very, if you look from the other side, you rotate, go here, right? It's very close to a leg drag, and leg drag would be this type of position. It's very close, just with the crab hook, right? We have the crab hook, we'll be pinching him down. So it's, it's super hard for him to turn in, right? It's basically impossible, which is one of the main jobs of the crab hook in general. That's why we use crab hooks. We wanna push our opponent away and keep them from turning into us, right? So he can't turn in a ring. And from here, we have many options. We could fight for arm trying it, like we could fight for back takes from here, but we could fight so many options. Um, but um, what often, happens if you try to push up, they push back down, right? When they push back down, you can just reinvert and go back to the same option you already had, right? Either here or here, whatever you can get. Here, boom, bring them up. Here. So we have this basically, um, we have covered a lot of basically options, right? From here, here, I come in, this, boom, I punch. And again, it could work in the other direction too. I might, from here, go straight to top side. But if you chill, rip it. Yeah, I could just go straight to top side here, right? right? And then, while I'm doing this, I'm uninverting. I'm trying to come here, but he's giving me a lot of resistance. Now, bring him back there. That's what we just did in the earlier. But uh, just the last session. Okay. So you can go either way. And then, uh, yeah, they work well together. Okay, from here, again, the two options are here. I'm either pushing him down, and move my hip up. So you see his hip is coming up, he's coming up, he's coming up. Right? Beautiful. If we can't get this, it's because he's resisting here. Right? So I'm trying to push him down, but he's resisting. He's kicking down like this, right? And his hip is super heavy. I can't lift him. I can't lift him. So instead of going against the force, every, you always want to be supportive, you know? So if he wants to go this way, you're like, okay, let's go this way, right? So you can't. You just basically do the, the inversion in the other direction, right? So I'm here, my head moves past his hips, right? So close to his hip, and then the other come out on the other shoulder, the outside shoulder, and now I have a lot of uh, force to push you because my shoulder is basing, and right? if you push it into me, I have a lot of force here. I could force the top side. I could come in here, right? go from my back leg from here. That's a great option. Or, you know, just run around, huh? <laughs> mix stuff together. Okay. The other option is, you come in here, you get everything going, you come in here, you push it back, you come back to top. You also see, I already placed my bottom hook as a crab. That's a crab hook again. Once I um, reinvert, this is my second crab hook, right? So this leg is not just like floating there, it's like already a crab hook, which also prevents him from pulling his leg back, right? He tries to rotate with it this way. Just this way. <laughs> okay. So you see how oh, this one is stopping his bottom hook. From, if he tries to uh, retract it, this is block two, right? And this is block two. But they're both blocked, right? And then if he push into me, maybe I try to come up, but he's too strong, I can't get it. I just re and fall back down basically. I'm in my crab hook here again, right? And we can do all the cool options from here. Then it's already there. Okay. The main one is just combining this in this spot where you can push pull, right? You see we're here. Okay. We're here, and we like push in this direction, either get them up or we come to top crab on this side, right? If you combine those two, you already have a, like a pretty functional little system. Okay. Questions for this? Want to see it again, different angle? Cool. All right, one, two. <laughs> okay, so uh, I already uh, ran a little bit too long. Um, I will be over there on the smaller mat, so if you have more questions about bolos or crab rides, anything of those sorts, um, just come over there. You know, a few of you already asked, so I told you to come there uh, right now. Then we can talk about it more in, in, uh, in peace, okay? Because I don't want to steal other people's time. Um, otherwise, thanks for coming, and yeah, have fun. The other class.